Hi PUBG friends and welcome to another episode of PUBG Play Club. I know everybody at the end of the day is scrapping trying to get that chicken dinner, but sometimes it's just not in the cards. We're coming into the game where the leaderboard is still tight enough that there's a fight for first. We're coming into circle six where there's only a smidgen of Cobraria in play in a section of the map that doesn't usually get that much attention. We have been seeing teams moved into less and less cover. So now let's move a little bit further ahead into where we are now in circle seven as everything's starting to close about the 25 minute mark. Sonics have their own ridge where they have been demolishing teams around them and have a massive kill count just due to great area control. Shoot to kill is going to be in the east, but very few options on how to rotate away from it. Our Cabrera teams that are still fighting for some form of safety are going to be AKM to the south and gas cans to the west. As Circle 7 pops into a new zone, there is really only about a rock for cover and that high value spot for Sonics. Their ridgeline has oversight on everything. We've talked about time and time again that gas cans and Adam and they're just amazing shot calling and quick responses. So let's follow how they try to navigate this. Instead of pushing the circle, gas cans opts to push into AKM's position. As the circle pops, they understand what their new goals are and execute fast. They toss down smokes to give themselves covered across an open road so AKM can't see them. This allows them to come in through a back gate. The issue is that's its own independent choke point. Gas cans knows AKM's general position but they are walking into a complex area to firefight in with inexact info. AKM has read the weakness in their defense and put Domox in a good position to defend. Viewers tend to forget, but we make smokes opaque for watching. This is actually what they're seeing moving into this and how hard it is to actually see what's going on around you. AKM Domox is on a building looking down into the courtyard. He does reveal himself, tossing a few mollies into the gas cans. As gas cans come through that choke point, this is where Domox realizes his opportunity. But the issue is how fast gas cans continue to respond. As the throwables come out, gas can splits and dodges all of them. AKM only have two members set up in this very smart defense. Those two angles and elevations are good to try to make sure that they can turn this choke point into a kill box. But now that they have been revealed and heavily outnumbered, this is a problem. Domix's stand is a valiant attempt, but in the end, it doesn't get the knocks that he wants, but it serves as a great distraction. Gas cans move to shoot Damux, and so Ali RV shifted to have vision on the next choke point. Spots gas cans and gets a knock onto Y kick a move guy. Gas cans just responds too fast though. Nikos instantly picks up Y-Kick and move Khaled, carry him into a safe rest spot. Greg shot counter moves around to make sure he's providing cover for the rest. Adam holds down his position to deny Ali RV the chance to assault, both of them exchanging fire. Greg then unloads nades to stop Ali RV from being able to push when Adam needs to med after taking a few hits. AKM tries one more trick and Ali moves in top of some boxes hoping to get some knocks, but yet again, coordinated pushes coming out from gas cans together negates his attempt. So, while all of this has been going on, what's been happening with Sonics and SDK? Nothing, really. They've been kind of playing footsie with each other, as only Luke did manage to get close enough to Sonics and the other members couldn't move. Sonics' firing lines are just too strong. He does get a knock, but it's not going to be enough. Circle 8 pops, and yet again, favors the Sonics. Oddly enough, what does happen with Luke 12 gives a chance for Gas to get members into a safer environment. By doing so, Luke has managed to get one member down, and Sonics has to move two members to support. They don't know how many members of Shoot to Kill are in this position at the time. So two members of Sonics are looking at Luke's direction, expecting the potential of more Shoot to Kill members, leaving Mime just to look at Gas Cans and they exploit that, finding a new way to move in the circle. Gas Cans are clinging to life where they can. They do spot a rock and set their sights on trying to get to it. It is the only safety to be had. STK lose their small bit of cover and die to the zone. There's just no way for them to make it in. Gas Cans fight isn't over. Survival points accomplished, yes, but it's time to go for more. Problem is, Tig has already moved to the rock and has a way easier approach than they do. Sonics do a great job of defending up their area of control as they've been doing the entirety of this game. Gas cans are trying, but it's not long before the options just get too limited. With the blue at their back, they're slowly being picked apart. Waikika Mukau gets a knock on Tig, and suddenly the rock becomes an option again. He charges for it, pushes in, and flushes Tig. One more point. Knocks Shrimzy. Each one has read this and knows exactly how Waikika Mukau is going to move. As Cal circles, going for that other flush, h wing gets vision, takes out Cal, and Sonics get the victory. Sonics get an insane 19 kill win for 29 points. This is the game that seals their PCS6 victory. Gascans fought hard to get 12 points, which doesn't seem like much compared to Sonics 29 points. At the end of the day, they end up third overall with three point lead over E United. Congrats to Gascans, Yaho, as well as E United, and of course, Sonics, who put up a phenomenal run through that series. PCS 6 Americas is done, but there is still plenty of PCS action that's happening in multiple regions and throughout the year. Also, don't forget, we got PNC that's coming up. PUBG Nations Cup, you know, is going to provide some amazing plays. So until then, I'll see you guys on the Battleground.